Narayana Skitam Naram Chevrano Tamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tito Jayari Ret Nesta Presho Bhadresu Nitam Bhagata Sevya Bhagatu Tama Shuki Bhakti Bhavati Nastiki Nikama Kapadu Garikam Param Shuka Bhagatamanita Jovi Sambat Kivata Bhagatam Vasham Hora Horusikam Krishna Sadam Bhagati Damagani Karuna Stadu Shamasha Parana Kodano Ditam Tama Vyadush Adabishuta Vishadam Vibhu Samapya Dana Pitam Bhagatam Bhakti Dhamaranam Sanklesha Nirvana Musanti Nanya Daham Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinu Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopisha Gopika Jantara Rikantana Moshtadim Jaya Tham Surito Pango Mama Mindaya Madhya Gati Matsa Vrisha Param Bhavya Radha Namodama Sri Manrasa Rasa Nambi Vamsi Vatakas Karsan Tanesha Nagari Kopanata Sri Asaram Nibyadvandana Kapadurma Da Sri Madhvata Gata Shema Sanishto Sri Sri Radha Govinda Prasadhavi He Seva Manish Marami Namo Brahmanya Dabaya Govabhani Takati Taya Krishnaya Govinaya Namo Namaha Om Aghirati Maranda Shahangarangana Sarake Chaksurun Miritam Yena Tashmai Shri Gurveya Namaha Sri Chaitanya Maru Vishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutare Swayam Rupa Karameyam Dadati Swaparantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Atapara Kamalam Sri Guru and Vaishnavam Shah Sri Rupam Sagadaram Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Samsadevam Sadvaitam Savarutam Parejana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Param Sahagana Larita Sri Vishakan Vitam Shah Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pasaya Buddha Deshi Mari Bhakti Padanta Shami Kalama Namaste Sari Sati Devi Guru Vani Pachari Ne Neha Vishesa Sanyori Vaskada Desara Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sri Govakta Vinnam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare It is 40 minutes past 7 Officially we're 10 minutes late since 25 past 7 I've been trying to boot up on Facebook live without any success for some reason going from zoom to Facebook just wasn't happening I tried about 20 times finally I closed doom shut it down restarted it then tried a second time to get on Facebook and this time it worked so it's not for lack of trying it's not that I was late Facebook was late. Blame it on Facebook. But anyway, thanks for your patience. Thanks for jumping in. John Malik, Gene, Brent, Ram Kishore, Rakesh. <laughs> thanks for waiting, putting up with all the technical snafus and difficulties. Uh, let me announce also tomorrow I have a meeting at the county, Utah County offices at 9.30 a.m. with the Utah County's Attorney, Health Department, Department of Safety, the Utah County Sheriff's Department. We're going to see if we can, uh, for the Festive Colors next March in 2022, we're going to see if we can hire a private company. And I have to meet with the private security guard across the street prior to the 9.30 meeting. I have to meet with him at 8.45, so I don't think I'll be able to be online with uh, Transanil Tuesday tomorrow. Hopefully, we've been paying the Utah County Sheriff's eighteen to twenty thousand dollars to manage a crosswalk. It's not even security. We have our own security for the festival, but it's just so that people can safely cross this uh, county highway. So we've got the same company that we use for security. We want to expand their responsibilities to include the crosswalk. Many of them are former military, former police, so they should have all the bona fides in order to do it. But we have to convince the county to allow that and if that's the case we'll save about fifteen thousand dollars next march on the festival of colors which will be a great relief it's uh, kind of depressing on one level to see all that money siphoned off to the to the government when it could be used uh, to propagate krishna consciousness which is the prime necessity of the age kali karera dama krishna nama sankirtana krishna shakti vinari tere the religion the process for elevating above the level of the animals in this Kali Yuga age is Krishna Nama Sankirtan, is chanting the holy names of the Lord. And those who prove themselves to be effective in spreading the glories of the holy name and the practice of chanting the holy names, they have the special Krishna Shakti Bina Nahi. They can do so only by the special potency of Krishna. So we'll see tomorrow whether Krishna being in the hearts of the Utah County Sheriff's representative, the hearts of Utah County 
uh, attorney, health department, public safety, uh, whether they'll cut cut us loose from the, the preponderance of Utah County Sheriff's Department and let us uh, hire our own private security company. And I'll be back on uh, Wednesday, and I'll wait with bated breath and your fingers crossed. I'll be back on Wednesday to give the uh, results of that meeting. Rob Kishore has a possible explanation for our tardiness today. We went on Zoom, and through Zoom, we went to Facebook Live, and Facebook Live just wasn't coming up. And so Rob Kishore says that Zoom had an update, so there may be some incompatibility or bug. But once we closed down Zoom altogether and restarted it, then we were able to appear uh, side by side here on Facebook. So anyway. Better late than never, probably. I always used to say after having come to America the, in the autumnal years of his life. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we're, we're launching out today with a new verse. Oh, let me admit Rob here into the Zoom room. How are you doing this Monday morning, Rob? Are you over your illness from last week? No answer. All right. So here is our verse. Itam sarat pravik shiko ritu hare vishrin bato nu nu shavanam yasho manam sankir tanyanam murabir mahatmabir bhaktir avraj tama rajash tamo paham. Muni, a great sage amongst the demigods, is speaking and saying, Thus, during two seasons, the rainy season, the autumn, I had the opportunity to hear these great soul and sages constantly chant the unadulterated glories of the Lord Hari. As the flow of my devotional service began, the coverings of the modes of passion and ignorance vanished. Everyone knows that sitting water can become polluted, contaminated, tainted, even poison. If you see uh, sedentary water, water is not flowing, and it has a little bit of foam around the edges, be very careful because that foam indicates the presence of toxics. Don't drink that without purifying it at the very least. However, wherever you have flowing water, especially high up in the mountains, uh, the Ganges gets polluted down in the flatlands, down in the plains. But as it comes from its source, Gangrotri, and flows down through the Himalayas into the lowlands, it is completely pure unalloyed and uncontaminated. So this prayer about the flow of devotional service, of course, reminds us of another similar prayer made by Kunti, the mother of the pious and righteous Pandavas. When Krishna was leaving, after having saved them from so many dangers during their 13 years of exile, and even prior to that when they were children with Duryodhan, um, Karna and others, um, and then in the Battle of Kurukshetra, of course, um, Krishna had been with them, bringing them back from the brink of disaster again and again and again and again and again. There's a whole list of ways and times that Krishna saved the Pandavas from disaster. Now the Pandavas are enthroned, their enemies are killed, there are no more emergencies on the horizon, and so Krishna is going to now go back to his capital city of Dwarka, presumably citizens of Dwarka have been missing him greatly, so he's going to give them some of his darshan. Kunti realizes on one level that this may be the last time in this lifetime that she's ever going to see Krishna again, and she tenders to Krishna the most heartfelt, sweet, tear-jerking prayers in the whole Bhagavatam. This is one of those verses. O Lord of Madhu, Madhu Pate, Madhu Pate, Ratimudvataram, as the Ganges flows forever, unceasingly and uninterruptedly to the sea, let my attraction constantly be drawn to you without being diverted to anyone else. A couple of verses later, she says, In traditional Vedic India, a woman was under the care and protection 
during the early years of her life, say up until about 12 or 14, of her father and her brothers. There were men around to protect her um, uh, and look after her. And then when she gets married, generally the marriage takes place in her maternal home. Could always say maternal home, paternal home, the home she grew up in. And then after the marriage, she goes in procession to the home of her husband. She's allowed to bring maid servants and friends if she's uh, in the upper level of society and she can afford to do so. She can bring some of her best friends with her to ease the pain of transition. She's leaving her father's house, going to the house of her husband. She doesn't know her husband that well. She's awkward. She's a little apprehensive. And so to allay all of those fears and to make a smooth transition, many of her girlfriends or maidservants are allowed to go with her and keep her company. So there's a great sisterhood. Um, so Kunti says, She's acknowledging that, okay, you, you may go from this house to that house. You may go from your paternal house to the house of your husband. Uh, you're going from one set of relatives to another set of relatives, this set of relatives by birth, this set of relatives by marriage. But actually, Krishna is a tabi shesha vishramam. He's in everyone's heart. So in one sense, you're not really going from one set of beings to another because you're always surrounded by Krishna in the form of super soul who's in the heart of every living being. And you have a more direct, more long-lasting connection with Krishna than you do with any birth family members or any family members by marriage. Krishna is in the heart of all living beings. And not only in your heart in this lifetime, but he was in your heart in the last lifetime, the lifetime before that, the lifetime before that, the lifetime before that. Lifetime before that. In a his life as uh, uh, as 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 uh, you call yourself Vidarbi. Your father was Devarva, and the daughter of Devarva is Devarbi. But you're actually not this body. You're not this mind. You're thinking that you're a female named Vidarbi, the daughter of Vidarva. But actually, you're neither the mind nor the body. You're an eternal spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna. And it's due to family affection, birth family, marriage family. It is due to this illusory affection that we become attached to this material body and set ourselves up for suffering. Now, our point is, our title today is, affection will always be there. Sometimes people mistakenly think that because affection sets us up for pain, for loss, for heartache, for disappointment in this material world, then spiritual world, spiritual life, it must be made possible by the negation of affection. If affection is a cause of suffering, then if we jettison, if we throw affection overboard and try to steel ourselves against all societal relationships, all family relationships, try to live without any affection, that's just not possible. And why is it not possible? Because as living beings, we must have feelings of affection for others. If you don't have feelings of affection for others, you don't have any life. Embarking on spiritual life with a misconception that spiritual life means to negate affections, it's like you have the measles with a flu and uncomfortable symptoms, you're miserable. And then you think, well, if I kill myself, I won't have to suffer flu symptoms anymore. I won't have to suffer measles symptoms. Well, yeah, that's true, but then you won't feel anything at all. That's not a solution. The solution to the flu or measles is not to kill yourself, but cure yourself. You know, the, now you're moving, you're speaking, you're getting up, you're getting down, it's full of pain, full of discomfort. You just want to remove the disease. You don't want to remove life itself. You don't want to kill yourself in order to cure the disease. There's a famous phrase says, don't throw out the baby with the bath water. Well, because affection is the source of suffering and misery in this material world, you know, we think if we just throw out affection, that'll solve all our problems, but then we won't be alive. So, dead man doesn't have any problems, but 
thing is he doesn't have any pleasure, he doesn't have any goals, he doesn't have ambitions, he doesn't have any life either. And so affection's going to be there, whether it's in material life or spiritual life, because that's, that's who we are. People think uh, if in material life there's anger, there's desire, there's hankerings, there's attraction, uh, then uh, spiritual life means to just cut all that out. No, no. Even in the spiritual world, just read the Nectar of Devotion, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu by Rupa Goswami. And the whole thing is about spiritual feelings. Even in the spiritual world, there's desire. There's anger. There's hankerings. There's feelings of attraction. There's guilt. There's ghastliness. There's being embarrassed. There's joking. Um, every emotion that we feel in this material world is, is a perverted reflection of those same emotions in the spiritual world. The only difference is that the emotions in the spiritual world, Prabhupada describes it, are without inebriation. They're without material inebriation. Inebriation means, if you don't know what the word means, inebriation is like when you're drunk or you're stoned. You don't see things as they are. So material inebriation means to mistake this material world as all in all. And to mistake this material body and this material mind as who you really are. And to establish spiritual life, the path is not to negate desires, only to change the quality of desires to concentrate on the service of the Lord. That will replace the desire for sense gratification. Otherwise, sense gratification is there. In material life, sense gratification is there. In spiritual life, However, spiritual life means to act for the sense gratification of the Lord. Material life means to set myself up as a little deity and act only for my sense gratification, thus setting up the hard struggle for competition and for material existence. Kama prema don hakara vibhina loa arahema yaichara shurupa vidakshana. Iron and gold are both metals. They have that in common. So lust and love are both emotions. But love is lust purified. Love is not the absence of lust, but it is that emotion of lust, that dirty emotion, tidied up, cleansed, purified, it becomes love. Or it actually originally was love, it became lust when we contacted this material world. In the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Kapil is instructing Devahuti, He says, originally we're pure, we're, we're lovers, that's our nature. Love is our life. Love makes the world go round, not just the material world, but the spiritual world. Like a raindrop, a raindrop coming from the sky is totally pure and uncontaminated. However, as soon as it touches earth, then it becomes muddy. The purity becomes compromised by the contact with the earth. And so similarly, we're pure spirit souls, part and parcel of God. But when we contact this material nature, then our love becomes transformed into a, a lower type of a thing, which we call lust. And when Kunti prays, Atavisha, O Lord of the universe, O soul of the universe, please transfer my ties of affection. And every girl in Vedic India has affection going in two directions. They have affection for their birth family, and they have affection for their marriage family. The marriage family is that connection by which you have sons and grandsons um, for whom you're you're very you're ready to give up your life in fact. So Kunti is not saying to cut off the family relations. She's not trying to eliminate relations from her life, but she's asking Lord Krishna, heighten, elevate my shneha, my affection to you, because from you, my birth family members, my marriage family members all come. You are mata pita. You are everything. Any relationship that we have in this material world, whether it be with siblings, sisters, brothers, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, with teachers, with coaches, with co-workers, any of, any of that flavor, any of that pleasure that we get from any of those relationships 
is originally within Krishna. And so if you are able to overcome the skin connection, the skin relationship, and elevate to the point of having a pure soul to soul, individual soul to supreme soul relationship with Krishna, then that's the perfection of life. Prabhupada gave the example, if you have $5, and you may be understandably very attached to that $5. Someone comes up and says, you shouldn't be attached to that $5. Just give it away. Tear it up. Throw it in the water or something. Throw it in the river. And say, well, well, but how will I eat? How will I, you know, I got to, this $5 at least will get me through the next 24 hours to get me a meal. I say, no, no, just give it up. It's not practical. It's not rational. But if someone else comes to you and says, I have a million dollars, I'll give you a million dollars if you'll give up the five dollars. And how quickly you can't give up the five dollars quickly enough, because within the million dollars that you're trading it for, there are so many five dollar bills. And Kunti says, Lord, help me to give up my skin attachment to the Pandavas and Brishnis, my birth family and my marriage family, um, in exchange for increasing and thickening my attachment to your lotus feet. Examples given, if you see the sun, then you see everything. All the trees, all the grass, all the rivers, all the clouds, all the houses, all the roadways, all the livestock, all the people. If you see the light of the sun, that means to see everything else which had previously been unseen in darkness. So if you see Krishna, if you're fortunate enough to awaken your attraction, affection for having a transcendental loving relationship with the Supreme Lord and everything is there. There's nothing missing. Anytime we make a choice to marry this person as opposed to this or, this or that other person, it's it's a choice and it separates the one, you know, the one we decide to connect with, it means we're disconnected from so many other living beings. But when you, yata toro monana sechana, when you connect with Krishna, Krishna is the root of everything. Just like when you water the root of the tree, then nothing is lost. Everything is included within that one process of watering the root of the tree. So Kunti is saying, let my, let my affection, let my, the water I have, so to speak, be placed at your lotus feet. Let me direct my energy and focus my attention on the root of everything. And within that relationship, everything else will be included. And this is the natural inclination of every living being. We all want to love and we want to be loved. But unfortunately, due to contact with this material nature, our natural tendency to love becomes transformed by the modes of passion and ignorance into something unwanted and misleading called lust. Now, if by the grace of the Lord, Ramanda, Brahmite, Kono, Bhagavan, Jiva, Guru, Krishna, Pashade, Pai, Bhakti, Lota, Bij, one starts hankering after that relationship which is unchangeable, which is unlimitedly blissful, and which is eternal in place of the temporary disappointing relationships of this material world. Then it is indicated Brahmanda, Brahmi, Brahmite, Kono, Bhagavana, Jiva, Guru, Krishna, Pashade, Pai, Bhakti, Lata, Bhish. If one hankers sufficiently in this human form of life for that permanent, eternal, blissful relationship with the Lord, it is said that the Lord will send one an unadulterated devotee, a pure, practiced, experienced devotee of the Lord to give the, the neophyte practitioner the chance to hear the unadulterated glories of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. A common characteristic of pure devotees of the Lord is that from them flows constantly the name, fame, form, qualities, and activities of the Lord. Each pure devotee is themselves like a river and such pure devotees as birds of a feather flock together such pure devotees look to each other look to similar personalities to gather and to combine it's like different rivers 
flowing into a, a confluence. Um, so when pure devotees get together, then the Lord brings his lazy boy, he brings his refreshments, and he just makes himself comfortable there sitting amongst the pure devotees. Naham tishtanti vayakante yogi namadishu yata gantri man bhakta yata tishtami harada. The Lord himself declares that he is not to be found in the kingdom of God, in Vaikuntha. He is not to be found in the hearts of the yogis. So he's not in the kingdom of God. He's not. Where is he? He says, wherever two or three pure devotees sit down and by the confluence of their flow of glorious words honoring me, I sit and I make myself comfortable there. Or wherever two or three devotees are gathered, the Lord's name, fame, form, and pastimes flow uninterrupted, and the Lord himself is there. Now, if you're like Prabhupada, and uh, you felt uh, mercy, you felt uh, empathy for the fallen condition of living souls, and if you had been ordered by your spiritual master to go to a far distant place of the world, where there are no other pure devotees, where there's no other kata, where there's no other association to assemble, then what do you do? You create your own association of pure devotees. You take people where they are in the most fallen, contaminated statuses of life. You, you, you bring them under your shelter. Uh, you mentor them. You teach them. You initiate them. And you bring them up to the level where you can discourse with them. Where you can, dis uh, where you can qualify them to speak on the glories of Krishna. It's not an accident that any bona fide spiritual master insists that before anybody take advantage of their tutelage, take advantage of their patronage, those prospective disciples must give up four sinful activities which will limit, if not destroy, any progress in the practice of hearing and chant. Bona fide spiritual master before taking disciples the minimum conditions are no illicit sex, no gambling, no intoxication, and no meeting. They won't give up those things, or at least move in the direction of throwing these seeds aside. Then the spiritual master will not waste his time with such attached disciples. However, when and if there are an assembly of two or three more devotees discussing the glories of the Lord, there are Three types. There are two types of people. There's the speaker and the listener, but it is also a fact that anybody within earshot, any audience members who can hear the question and answers rebounding between one pure devotee and another, they also become purified. In the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st chapter 17, verse, Vasudeva Kata Vishnam Purusham Svinam Bhaktaram Shrutikam. Three types of people become purified by the uninterrupted flow of nectar from the mouths of pure devotees. When Sukadeva Goswami was asked questions by the King Mars Preekshit, there was in the area within earshot a vast assembly of sages gathered from all over the world. So not only did Sukadeva Goswami benefit from being able to articulate the principles of devotional service, and Pariksit to be able to imbibe that, but all the sages became equally purified. So the example is given that the Ganges, the Ganges came into this material universe when Trivikram, Brahmana, the dwarf, expanded himself and with his toe he punctured the outer layer of the universe. From that hole, the causal ocean, the waters of the causal ocean entered the universe and they, the, their force was so great that they threatened to sweep away all the planets, upper, lower, and middle. Lord Shiva very kindly took the force of that flow in his head, dispersed it so that it, from his head, rivulets flow. And they, they, they flow starting from the upper planets through the middle planets and the lower planets. So that flow of water, spiritual water, from the causal ocean, uh, as it appears on the earth planet, is known as the Ganges. The Ganges ha has, has its origin outside of the universe. It comes into the universe, originally flows through the topmost planet, Sarloka. It comes down to the middle planets, 
and it appears as the Ganges River here. On it. So as the Ganges purifies the upper, the middle, and the lower planetary systems, the flow of kata, topics about the glories of the Lord, purifies three types of men, the speaker or the preacher, the person who inquires or asks questions, as well as the person who listens. Now, Marj Preekshit, the listener of the Srimad Bhagavatam, was Rajarshi Satama. That means he was the best of all the kings by virtue of his Krishna consciousness. And amongst all sages and learned personalities and devotees, Sukadeva Goswami was Muni Satama. So you have Rajarshi Satama, the best of the kings, listening to Sukadeva Goswami's Muni Satama. And just imagine what's created there. Just imagine what's created there. Wherever you have a potent man and a fertile woman, you can expect that conception will take place, fertilization will take place, and there will be a great result. And so absorbed was the Rajarshi Satamon Pariksha in the words of the Muni Satamon that for seven days, Maharaj Pariksha forgot everything material, even his personal comfort in relation to food and drink. In the second chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, 8th chapter, 26th verse, Maharaj Parikin makes this astounding statement. They've been going for five, six, they're entering into the seventh day. Maharaj Parikin declares, Name savo parayani brahma ashin pi bado chatapi tadbak javdini tadbak javdini I'm getting so much pleasure, so much satisfaction from drinking the nectar into my ears from the mouth of Sukadeva Goswami that what to speak of not eating, not sleeping, not drinking, I haven't even thought about those things. It hasn't even occurred to me, hey, we've been going four days and I haven't had a drink of water. No, no such thought even popped into my so absorbing and all-encompassing are the purified is the flow of the purified words from Sukadeva Goswami that he said even though I've been fasting from eating I have not been sleeping I have not even been drinking water I don't know if any of you people out there Govinda Dev or Ram Kishore anybody has ever done Nirjal Akadasi it's one day a year we just had Akadasi yesterday Nirjal is one day a year where you do a kadasi, not only fasting from grains, but you fast from solid food. Not only fast from solid food, you also fast from water. If you've ever done Nirjal, a kadasi, where you fast from all, not only solid and liquid foods, you know how tired and exhausted you get later on in the day. And here, large Preekit is not only fasted from food and water, but he hasn't slept for seven days, and he says, I am not at all exhausted. Rather, he's jacked up. He's more enthusiastic. He's more keen to listen on the sixth and seventh day than he was on the first day. And why is that? How is it that an ordinary king, a politician, a diplomat is capable of such renunciation? It's not that he's concentrating on giving up sleeping or giving up eating or giving up drinking. He didn't even think about those things. The thought that, hey, I've been fasting for six days didn't even pop into his mind. Why? Because from the very beginning of his life, the first person he saw before he even saw the light of day, even within the womb of his mother, Ashutam launched the Brahmaster weapon at the baby within his mother's womb to destroy all members of the Pandava dynasty. And Krishna entered into the womb to protect Mars Prekit as an embryo from the scorching rays of this nuclear weapon. So the first person that Mars Prekit saw in this lifetime, even before exiting the womb, was the Supreme Personality God. So it's not that he's without affection but that his affection was stolen before he even saw the light of day. Before he even took birth, he'd already been bought and sold, bound, lock, stock, and barrel to the Lord. 
His very name, Parikshit, means examine. And that means he only lived for one thing, to again see that Lord who had saved him within the womb of his mother. One who has sought and achieved the protection of the Lord is called Vishnu Rata. Vishnu Rata, whose only desire, goal in life, is to shelter as an atom at the lotus feet of the Lord, is perfectly situated in hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam from Brahma Rata. One who is protected and sheltered in Vishnu should hear from someone who is fully realized in the science of spirituality. And anyone else, uh, any other couple, pure and chanter, who are not Vishnu Rata and Brahma Rata, the whole discussion will be misdirected. It'll be spoiled. But if you have a qualified speaker and a qualified listener, the result is a potential revolution for people in general. Those who are within ears drop or those who get the literature, the chronicles of such conversation, are indeed fortunate. In the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd chapter, 20 verse, Tajman Guru Prabhupada, Dignashu Sabdaparejana, Brahmani Upashram. Any person who seriously desires real happiness must transfer one's attachment for sense gratification, for personal sense gratification, to desiring the sense gratification of the transcendental senses of the Lord. And to that end, one must approach and serve humbly as well as inquire submissively from a qualified, bona fide spiritual master and take shelter of such a person by initiation. Until and unless one is initiated, one is actually linked up in the chain of devotional service. One prior to initiation is a helper of those who are linked to Krishna, but one is not personally linked. Initiation must be there. And it's fine to help the bona fide servants of the Lord, but eventually one would aspire to become a member of that chain of disciplic session and thereby be in particularly empowered to work with all the other liberated souls for the benefit of people in general. To those who work out of a feeling of compassion and kindness to relieve people in general of the attachments of material life which come from misdirected affection to this body and the extension of this body, family members, those are bona fide spiritual masters. Those are called nishnatam, deeply experienced and realized in the authorized Vedic literatures, as well as steeped in the practical understanding of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They're characterized by having scriptural knowledge, as well as practical experience about how to serve the Supreme Personality of God. Such gurus and spiritual masters can very easily dissipate the doubts of his disciples and help them to perform the functions of going back to home, back to Godhead. <clears throat> the symptom of realized understanding, practical implementation of the Vedas is called Upasha Masrayam. Upasha means the highest, the highest, and Ashram means having taken shelter. Those who are bona fide, those who are capable of delivering the disciples from birth, disease, and old age and death have not taken shelter of sense gratification. They've not taken shelter of speculative knowledge. They've not taken shelter of austerities. They've not taken shelter of yoga. They have taken, not taken shelter of demigods like Lord Brahma or Lord Shiva, but they have transcended the glittering illusions of the Vedic words, the uh, the dazzling positions of the demigods and the higher planets, they have transcended the uh, unworthy desires for family, friendship, and love, and transferred all their affection to that Mukunda who stands by the banks of the Yamuna in the moonlight with the flute to his lips, standing in threefold bending form with a quizzical Mona Lisa smile on his face. So affection must be there. But the key in spiritual life is under the bona fide guidance of a realized, experienced spiritual master, transfer that affection from family, friends, and country to the lotus feet of the Lord, who is the source of all good qualities, the source of all malice. We'll fi finish today with a, 
appropriate quote from the Chaitanya Charanrita Adi Lila, 5th chapter, 224th verse, where it is said, Shmeran Bangi Treya Pacharam Satyavishtanam, Bamsi Nishtaram Tushanam Ujaram Chandakenam, Govindyakyam Hare Tanam Isha Keshir Tudpagate Maprikshishas Tavadiri Sake Bandhu Sangara. My dear friend, if you are indeed attached to your worldly friends, then do not look at the smiling face of Govinda as he stands on the bank of the river Yamuna at Kesiga, casting sidelong glances. He places his flute to his lips, which seem like newly blossomed lotuses. His transcendental body, bending in three places, appears very bright in the moonlight. If you want to hold on to your lust, and if you want to resist the purification of your lust and the revival of your original, transcendental, eternal love of God, then by all means, avoid Krishna consciousness, avoid the chanting of the whole names, avoid prasadam, avoid anything to do with Krishna consciousness. Because once you get a taste of Krishna consciousness, once that ocean of happiness appears panoramically before you, you'll no longer be satisfied with the drop of pleasure which is represented by, by friendship, family, and love. Certainly, a drop of water is water, but if you're in a desert, if you're in the desert of this material world, a drop of water is insignificant. A drop of water will be of no help whatsoever. A thirsty man in the desert needs vast quantities of water. So, if you need vast quantities of water to satisfy the thirst within you for knowledge, for truth, for eternality, and happiness, then by all means, do go and look at the smiling face of Govinda playing his flute by the banks of Yamuna in the moonlight. Om Tat Sat. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama, Hare Hare. Prabhupada concludes this discussion with these words. The flow of devotional service is so potent that any onlooker also becomes liberated from the influence of the modes of passion and ignorance. These two qualities of nature are thus removed, and the Libyan entity is liberated, removed from all contamination, situated as original position. This is an example, Prabhupada says, of how Krishna conscious movement should spread all over the world to bring both the speaker, the listener, and the audience to the transcendental platform and take them all back home, back to God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That's it for Transcendental Tuesday. Any words, Rob? Uh, just uh, that I can only hope one day to, to see Govinda on the banks of the Yamuna in its threefold bending form. And uh, be unsatisfied with this material existence to a complete extent. In other words, as a thirsty man in the desert, you want a good, you want a lot of water. You don't want a drop of water. A drop of water won't do you any good. If you were trying to get happiness and satisfaction from a drop of water in the desert, what is required is an ocean of water, the ocean of mellows and flavors of emotions free from material inubities when that arise when we make our direct connection to Krishna. Thank you. We have some good comments here. Uh, good morning from Idaho. John Malik says, spiritual message all, always helped me to open my inner eyes. Thomas, again from Idaho, says, just what I needed to hear this morning. Thank you for a passionate and powerful presentation of this transcendental knowledge. Thomas is so wonderful. He always makes everyone feel good. Govinda Dave says, amazing lecture. Lots to think about. Rishangi says, love to talk about love. Love to talk about love. Rakesh says, transcendental Tuesday. Ki jai. And Ram Kishore sends us his greetings from Minneapolis. So as Govinda Dave knows, I won't be able to give the class tomorrow. So I have to meet with our private security company at 845 in downtown Provo. I have a pre-meeting with them to discuss our strategy for when we go into the county building 
at 9.30 for a meeting with the county attorney, police department, representative from the police department, public safety, as well as health department. We're trying to get everything sorted out tomorrow so that we don't have to spend $20,000 on, uh, I wouldn't say security, but it's it's not even security. It's, it's traffic control, really. We've been billed $20,000 for traffic control by the Utah County Sheriff's, and they do a good job. But unfortunately, um, with the uh, profit that the county wants built into such services, it is far, it is prohibitively expensive for us. And so we're going to propose to them that, uh, and we're going to have a mem member of the private security company, that that be handled by a private security company. And if we're successful, everybody agrees, and We'll save about fifteen thousand dollars on the upcoming festive colors in March. So we won't be with you Tuesday, but we will accept your prayers, your blessings, um, your ashavads to the result that we are successful in saving Krishna's money, keeping his side for much better purposes. So pray for us, and we'll let you know how the meeting went day after tomorrow on Wednesday. Thank you again, once again, and don't forget to chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare.